and the walls. Yeah. Yes. Now it's interesting how you got the name. Was it your your climbing somewhere? And I was hiking. Yeah. Hiking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was like I was hiking with my boy. He just left yesterday, and um, I came up the Her Majesty's part, and he came up the Wolf's part, and uh, it just sounded right. And then I told Kim, and I was like, I think I got a name for it, like because we wanted something. What we were trying to put together was something that was not just about two people, but more about creating like a world and something. You know what I mean? Like. It's like how the Wu-Tang Clan was created, you know what I'm saying? It's like you got all these different people that make up the collective, so there wasn't like a person that was Wu-Tang. Wu-Tang was a collective, and that's what Her Majesty and the Wolf says, it's a collective, creative yeah. collective. So Kimberly, for you, tell me how you guys met, because I know you were you look for producers and you, you came across Spencer. Yeah, I was working with a lot of different producers here in London and in LA and Texas, and um, I was truly trying to find someone that was like-minded within the the sort of music that I wanted to make and the sounds that get me going. And a friend of mine, um, actually a mutual friend of ours, mm -hmm. was telling me a lot about Spencer and, and said that we should get together and just vibe and see what was there. So yeah, we, we hung out for a day, um, had a chlorophyll green crazy drink, green it was drink. really good. <laughs> green drink. And just connected on life and, and connected on just um, experiences and had been traveling sort of the same circles but had never met. And we got in the studio and it just, it was easy. It just felt right and it was organic and when he asked if, if I'd be interested in doing something together, I, I jumped at the idea. How would you describe his sound? Because it's very, it's, it's dancey, it's got a lot of energy to it, but how would you personally describe the sound? Um, we were just trying to come up with that right now, but uh, <laughs> it's, you know, it's 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 real music. It's I call it festival music because it's, uh, it's just so big sounding, you know what I mean? It's regal, you know, there's strings, there's guitars, you know, as much as it's electro, it's very organic at the same time. And the songwriting is, is more in depth than what you would normally hear. You know what I mean? It's more catered to people, you know, who want to hear real music again. You know what I mean? An indie electro hip hop collective? Yeah. Something yeah. like that. That's <laughs> a nice one. And you also, you've produced it with people like What I Am and. I started, well, yeah, I started out, I got my first, when I very first got introduced into the music game, like to the. I was living in San Diego and uh, I had met some people who owned a studio, who owned the Beach Boys studio in Santa Monica and they introduced me to Apple and I met Apple first and then I ended up working with Apple's engineer and then he, he kind of took me under his wing and would take me to all his sessions so I got to see Will I Am do his thing and, I, and that's why I ultimately learned how to make the beats I do now. My stuff now and, and um, yeah, I've worked with a bunch of different people, you know, I was one of the, I got introduced to the game really, really young and at a pivotal point because the Black Eyed Peas were just blowing up, you know, so I met Justin Timberlake and Kenna and, and uh, Sergio Mendez and all these different people, yeah, so it's cool. And Kim, for you, everyone knows that you came from Pussycat Dolls, but for you as an artist, is this all you've wanted to be able to express yourself musically, like on your own and on your own merits? Yeah, absolutely. Being an artist, everything you want is to be able to express yourself without being held down from your own creativity. And I think that um, leaving the dolls, it was taking a huge leap of faith knowing that it was sink or swim. And I just keep kept swimming and, and trying to figure it out. And once I met Spencer, it's, it's when everything kind of clicked and everything kind of just felt right. And ever since then, creatively, it's just been amazing. It's been open. It's been uh, a blessing. And are you guys doing some festivals this um, summer? Yeah, doing wireless on July 2nd, doing Oxygen, doing the Oxygen Festival. I think we're doing something else, but I don't think I can talk about it yet. Yeah. You can't push <laughs> you at all? No, yeah, no, no, I don't know don't if I can. Don't push me, because I come out with it. I know, I'm not to yeah. I know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll be back in June too, doing some arena festival, or arena dates for um, some radio station stuff, you know. And also, um, so Kimberly, so for you now, what is the process in actually making the music? Are you writing as well? Are you also giving him help in his production? I mean, how does it work out between you guys? Well, it really all starts with Spencer. He's, he's the rock when it comes to the music. And um, yeah, I come in and I have my ideas and I'll tell Spencer, but ultimately he's, he's, the, he's the one that makes the calls. And I'll come in and I write my verses and we write the songs together along with our mm -hmm. friend Nick Furlong. Okay. What are you guys, what's your musical influences, like, growing up? Who are you guys listening to? For me, I, I mean, I, I started listening to, like, uh, I mean, obviously Michael Jackson when you're younger, but um, when I was, like, uh, sixth grade, I started listening to Tribe Called Quest. You know, I, I bought uh, Midnight Marauders, and then 
from there I, I became obsessed with Busta Rhymes and then you know when I was four, 13 and 14 I bought Daft Punk you know and just from there you know it led into all electronic music and underground hip-hop everything it's just influenced by a lot of different stuff classic rock you know anything that's good in music mm -hmm. how well you can be mine I'll start with um, I think my first album that I bought CD wise was Lionel Richie um, Tina Turner and then later it was definitely Busta Rhymes was a huge influence as well as Missy Elliott and Aaliyah was actually the catalyst that that inspired me to want to move to LA and pursue the dream and let's talk about the new single um, describe for me actually when that song was made and actually what was the concept behind it yeah you know the, the album was made in, in two different series and um, I was working at this place called King Size Sound Lab and the place I was working in is called The Cabin so I was making all these tracks called Cabin Fever and uh, Cabin Fever I was just in this room by myself with this engineer Sesso and uh, I just had a bunch of vintage keyboards and all kind of cool stuff and Goodbye Goodnight was one of those songs from that collection of uh, records I was making and eventually after I got it to a certain point I started working with our boy Nick Furlong and Nick and I were kind of talking about like all these mem like moments we've had since we've worked on this project because we came, became really close friends and uh, we came with the chorus that's where memories you know you know having a good time and all this stuff Goodbye Goodnight and uh, we came up with that, and then Kim came back to the States, and then she wrote her verse, and I wrote mine, and, and, the bridge. and we finished the song, yeah, yeah. the bridge. Yeah, she did the bridge, and mm -hmm. it was it. So many things. There are a lot of sharks in the music business, and you better have a very true sense of yourself and what you want before you, um, before you pursue it. And you have to listen to the opinions around you and um, be open to them, but ultimately make your own decisions and stay true to how you feel.